letsthinkshow.com. Welcome to the Let's Think Show. I appreciate you joining me today, and hopefully what we chat about will be of interest to you. It is certainly of interest to me. I have, for quite some time, not really cared for the direction that things are going uh, in the United States, and, and I love the, the area. You know, there are a lot of beautiful places and people, and it's, it's a wonderful place, but I've often thought, you know, I wonder if, if the grass is truly greener elsewhere. Should I think about Argentina, or is there just some way I can get away from all the junk by going and buying a farm down in the southeast and and just get away from it all. And if I want to go build a porch, not have to get a permit for it. And, you know, just get a a little taste of freedom, uh, more than what is available in the United States. And, and so I thought I would reach out to a friend of mine and uh, see what he had to say. He moved some years ago with his family down to Mexico. And he's a professional that works from his home. And I started, this is a recording, and uh, I started it out, and due to my horrible technology skills, I lost the first you know, five minutes or so of our interview. Uh, so we're going to pick up uh, where I uh, <laughs> kind of fixed things and made them work. And up to that point, we'd talked a bit about medical care, and the general point that Nathan made was that things are great. There's, uh, you know, the clinic is... You know, there are options, and the clinics are uh, clean and modern, and the doctors know what they're doing, and they've been very happy with medical care. It's much less expensive than in the United States, and uh, he likes that. So he's he's all about it, thinks it's a good deal. So let's now rejoin the conversation with Nathan, and we'll pick up uh, where I <laughs> left off after messing up. Welcome back from the break, and we are here with my friend Nathan today. Nathan is joining us uh, via the interwebs from Mexico, and we've been chatting a bit about uh, yeah, how things work down there, and, and is it as comfortable, and sh should I be scared to leave the U.S., or should I be scared to stay in the U.S.? Uh, and, and we talked a little bit about medical care. Uh, we talked. We just started talking about the cost of living, and I'm curious, what uh, what have you found, all told, my experience in Mexico has been that it's it's not that much uh, less expensive to go out and have a meal or a beer or whatever. It all turns out the same in the long run. Uh, what has been your experience in that way? So going out uh, generally is, is about the same, right? I mean, if you if I want to take my whole family out for a dinner uh, at, at a, like a sushi restaurant or something like that, um, it's going to cost me a thousand pesos, which is fifty dollars U.S., uh, which is pretty typical. Okay. Which is pretty typical for what one might spend um, in the U.S. Uh, but if I want to go buy all the ingredients to make food, it's much much cheaper. Now, okay. now I got to. I have to point out that I, I'm cheating a little bit because I'm vegetarian, and so okay. my whole family's vegetarian. So I have no idea what the comparative price of beef or chicken or pork or anything like that is, because we do, we don't even shop for it. Um, okay. But I can tell you that uh, like fruits and vegetables, so much cheaper. It's crazy. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great. Like uh, you know, uh, uh, stuff like yeah, you know, avocados, tomatoes, corn. Um, like watermelon, apples, bananas, all uh, like anything that's produce is just dramatically less expensive in Mexico. Okay, well, that's certainly a positive thing. Yeah. What about what about uh, internet? And and we're obviously we have a clear connection over the internet right now. The times I've visited, I've stayed in nice resorts, and I've you just been just fine. Uh, how do you find things overall, since that's kind of what you do for a, a job? How's, how's the internet where you are? Uh, it's generally good. Um, there are occasions where things get a little hiccupy, uh, depending on what's going on with the, with the provider. Uh, but I probably have about a 99.8% uptime, which is, okay. which is pretty good. 
um, and I have 100 megabit service uh, right. to my house, and I can get 200 megabit service. Uh, I just haven't bothered uh, doing that yet. Okay. But uh, okay. yeah, we the, like really we have no no serious internet problems. The the big okay the biggest thing we run into is once in a while like the kids will want to watch something on YouTube and it'll be like loading 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 and then they'll and then they can watch it. That that's like okay. a, that's like a maximum thing. But I, I okay. it's, it's, it's extremely rare for me to have uh, barriers to me working uh, based on internet service. Uh, okay. Unless, unless I screw up. If I don't pay my bill. <laughs> <laughs> then, then it goes off. Yeah, then, then, <laughs> you don't have a basic universal human right to have internet yeah, service there. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly correct. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, so, so if the internet stays on, then, then you're good. You can keep the dollars rolling uh, in. What about if a person isn't uh, an internet based person, you're a mechanic or an electrician or a, a whatever entrepreneur, um, I've heard conflicting stories from where I met you in Acapulco, speaking with a lot of people there. Some people have said, no, if you're, if you're a local whitey, you don't even want to try to start a business. And others have said you can. And what, what's been your experience? So, well, I'm, I'm not going to say I haven't done this myself um, because I have had, you know, work online for the whole time I've lived here. But I have known people that have started businesses. It's tricky. Um, the... Because the uh, first off, if you're if you're doing something that's sort of a uh, an everyday blue collar kind of thing, if you're a mechanic or an electrician, um, and I don't mean, I hope that didn't come across as demeaning those those professions. I actually <laughs> admire them greatly. <laughs> They're at the top of the heap. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the problem is is you're you're competing with Mexican labor. Uh, so your the average pay for a Mexican in a typical job is going to be around 200 to 250 pesos a day, which is basically about 10 bucks. Okay. Uh, I that would not be something that most Americans would um, find suitable for their needs. Uh, right. So you're going to get outbid for the, for the yeah, jobs. Yeah. You know, if you want a restaurant job, you're like, you're not going to make any money. <laughs> you, you can't be, right. you can't be a gringo and be a waiter. You're, it's just not going to happen. Uh, I have um, a couple of gringo friends who have restaurants and, and they struggle. They, they absolutely struggle. Uh, and just, just to put things together, even though, you know, they're employing people and so forth. Um, it's just not going to be profit margins of a, a Miami sushi place. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tough. It's uh, it's a difficult situation because uh, the you know the moment you're you're competing with local labor, well, they have a much different sense of their lifestyle requirements than you probably will. So right, you're right. You're going to want to live in you know a bigger house and and have conveniences like you know high speed internet. <laughs> Right. Talk about hot water. <laughs> yeah yeah hot water is that's actually a that's actually a privilege uh, uh, for a right. lot of places <laughs> in mexico um so uh, it, it, that's that's a bit of a challenge uh if you if you're going to do sort of a a normal uh, manual kind of of job if that's what you expect to get um you're not going to make a lot of money okay. that, that doesn't mean you can't get along you, know, you can right. It just means you're not going to live the way you are used to living in the states, doing the same job. Uh, right. You're you're going to have a much smaller place to stay. You're going to have. Uh, you probably won't have a vehicle. You probably won't have a car of any kind unless you bring it with you. Uh, and um, I mean, maybe you can get like a scooter, uh, but but for the most part. Okay. But for the most part. Uh, it's it's going to be a very different lifestyle than what you might have known in the U.S. Okay, so if a person's going to come down and they want to keep their three bedroom, two bath house with two cars and and a jacuzzi out back and a boat in front, uh, then it's going to cost less than the U.S. but not significantly. But you but you better have the money 
you better already have the money or have a way to get the money uh, while you're here. Uh, that's where okay. that's where the online thing comes in. So you know, if you if you have a I don't know if you have a, a very successful blog or uh, an online TV show of some kind, or if you write software, or if you I mean, if you, if you're in even if you're in sales, right? If you right. if you are in sales, but you typically do sales over the phone and you're not doing in person uh, deals. Then that's fine. You can hop on the phone and and do your thing from uh, from wherever you are. Right. So it, right. it's really just a question of whether or not you have to be physically present in order to do whatever it is that you generate revenue from. Okay. Now, and as far as working, also, and we've kind of covered most of this, but uh, just kind of out of curiosity, uh, the whole uh, panic of twenty twenty has caused so much disruption. Oh God. Uh, I think of a friend of uh, of ours that they say took their life savings and finally opened up a, a music school uh, just in a little 1500 square foot commercial condo and had just got it up and going and things were going great and the panic hit and they had to shut down. So they lost the business, the space, their life savings, everything completely gone. Oh, and then I think about all the restaurants that have gone from, you know, you have to make so much per square foot and now you're only allowed to have a quarter as much space. Has it been much the same in Mexico or first off, better, worse? First off, Shepard, you bring that up, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> Isn't it sad? I am absolutely heartbroken for all those people that, that I, and you, you have no idea how much uh, statistics I've researched on this, like the, the suicide rate, uh, drug addiction, the alcohol, uh, and it's hitting everyone like that. This stuff is and I, I'm going to interrupt Nathan there, and we are going to go to a break. And then as soon as we get back from the break, we are going to rejoin this conversation with Nathan, who's living in Mexico, and see what it's like there. Let's think show.com. This is Shepard, the Voluntarist, on the line with Nathan, my good friend the, who lives in Mexico right now with his family. And we're rejoining a conversation uh, pre-recorded and learning more about the possibility of escaping the United States to go to a better place. I don't know. That's what we're here to learn and see if we can get some tips from Nathan. We've just been talking about the phobia of 2020, the uh, coronaphobia, uh, everyone's scared, wearing masks, and, and what an impact it's having on, on people's lives uh, all over the world. Uh, and it's hitting everyone. Like, that the stuff is... Uh, I mean, if you think about it, there are entire states in the United States where alcoholics can't have an AA meeting. And, right. and that, right. that, that, that's just insanity like it's what I, I mean it's it's bad enough that you can't go to church like that sucks and then it's even right. it's even worse you can't go to your job but if you need to go talk to people because that keeps you alive and you can't yep. I, I it's just insane there's there's a whole category of uh what are called deaths of despair that are all right. all the suicide and drug overdose and alcohol abuse uh, deaths uh, that nobody talks about alongside the COVID nineteen deaths. Um, right. And there's and there's way more of them <laughs> because of all this yes. lockdown yes. bullshit. Um. So that being said, okay. So <laughs> so. If you if you're in Mexico, do you, do you, are, you, are there the same issues? Somewhat. Um, it varies from place to place, in a place like Mexico, and I know it. Th th it's really different everywhere in Central and South America. Right. Uh, it, it's very localized. Um, where we live is actually one of the more enforced environment okay oh good uh, good it'll give us a good idea yeah 
Um, so, so there's other places like if you go to like Tulum, which is on the Caribbean side of Mexico, uh, it's, nobody wears masks. Nobody like worries about the social distancing thing and all that crap. Um, here, because we have busy body baby boomers, um, <laughs> right. who are constantly making noise and, and threatening to beat you up in the grocery store because you're not wearing <laughs> a covering over your mouth. Um, it's, it's, it's a little more absurd. And, and so some businesses have absolutely been shut down, uh, because of it. And, uh, it sucks. It sucks. It sucks for the business owners. It sucks for the consumers. Um, yes. and we've seen firsthand sort of the reduction in overall economic activity and uh, obviously, when you have less economic activity, you have less profit making. When you have less profit making, you destroy the economy. And, right, and that's, right. that's really what all this shit is about. Like, it's just wrecking entire economies. Um, I think it's not as severe here as it is. In, it's certainly not in certain places in the U.S. I mean, it's certainly much less than a place like California, right? Where right. they're just you know, over the top. Uh, but... It, it still happens, you know, right. the, people still make an issue out of it. And, and they have actively shut down um, some retail and uh, dining places uh, specifically around that issue. But also you got to bear in mind, uh, it's Mexico. So when I first decided to move here, I had a friend to ask me, why the, Why do you want to move to Mexico? Like you, they, you, it, everything is corrupt there. Well, every you know, <laughs> cops are always expecting bribes. Government officials are always doing stuff that's illegal, and da 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 da. And I said, uh, you know what? I prefer my corruption with more transparency. Right. Right. <laughs> it's not that it's more corrupt than in the U.S. It's just yep, exactly. It's just a more obvious corrupt than the U.S. We don't call it a building permit, permit. We call it a mordida or something like that, right? The little bite of the dog is just the same thing gets done. Well, or, you know, we don't call it um, asset forfeiture. That, that kind of crap. Like, that's what happens in the U.S., right? Where, uh, you know, you just, they just take your stuff because it, they, the, the stuff is being accused of the crime, not you, right? So, they say, well, you use this car to deliver drugs to this guy, and therefore we're taking the car. Right. And, right. and you're like, well, yeah, but we're aren't we supposed to have like a trial and stuff? No, 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 no. Nope. Right. And yeah, there's none of that. Nope. Well, and that brings us into a, another couple questions I had, which was uh, safety. Safety from. Uh, other people, both private people and public people. And I have a number of friends that are, that choose a very different lifestyle than I do. And I, I was a cop for 10 years and there are certain things you can do to not really have to be all that scared of cops. Like don't have long hair. Don't, don't be any color other than white. Don't yeah, have tattoos. <laughs> It would don't don't look like a pothead, and and you'll pretty much be okay. Like I, I drive a decent car, and I'm a middle aged white guy, so it's not like I'm going to have problems with cops. I'll get a ticket every so often. I'll have ninety bucks stolen from me, but it's not it's not a huge issue. And that is, I know, a big fear that many people have about Mexico is is the extortion from the government. Uh, you know, people uh, government stealing your money or or other people stealing your money. What have you guys? discovered what have you learned well so uh, the sort of everyday cop encounters uh where you might get pulled over while you're driving um the number one thing we've, we've learned is do not ever admit you speak any spanish whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> okay so that works on all yeah, sides of the border <laughs> just be like you you just because they're, they're, they're just going to get tired of trying to talk to you in English, but if they happen to speak English uh, and, and, and they confront you in that, this happened the other day with, uh, with uh, my wife, she was, had the kids in the car and she was coming back from a party with some, 
some other friends and, and they tried to wave her over to the side of the road, but she just kept driving. Right. And <laughs> so the guy, the guy that was trying to wave her over hopped in his car and chased after her and eventually basically forced her off the road. Not like by smashing into the car or anything, but making it clear that she better get, she better pull over. Right. And so he comes up to the car and this guy happened to speak English and, and he was like, why didn't you pull over when I signaled you earlier? And she said, have you looked at yourself? You're, you're dressed head to toe in black body armor. You're carrying a submachine gun and you're wearing a mask. Like you're a fucking terrorist. <laughs> and I've got three kids in the car. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull over for that. <laughs> I keep driving. I'm like, right. keep driving. And the guy, and the guy, sort of like <laughs> looked shamefully and was and and thought about it for a second. He was like, "Okay, well, I just, I just wanted. Okay, go ahead." <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was the end. That was the end of the story. Um, it, it's it's not like the U.S. I mean, if you said that to a cop in the U.S., they'd be like, "Hands behind your head." Um, Right. But here, there's a lot more humanity in the police. It's just that they don't make a lot of money. And part of their income is finding ways to convince people to pay them bribes. Right. Right. Well, that and then another. Uh, but, uh, by, by the way, this is, I, no, sorry, important tip. If you are ever in Mexico when you get pulled over by a cop and they want you, they're threatening you with a ticket and you want to bribe them, do not bribe them more than 100 pesos. If you, if oh, you really? bribe them okay. more than 100 pesos, they take the description of your car and dis- and release it to every other cop in the area, and you become a target. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Here's some yeah, money exactly. back. And I, I made that mistake once. And um, I, I think you know David Robinson, uh, our, our mutual friend. Yeah. Yes. He, so the first time he got pulled over, he, he bribed the, the cop with uh, 300 pesos. And then he couldn't drive 50 feet without getting pulled over for the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knew where to go. <laughs> oh, you see that gray, then you see that gray <laughs> van with the debt to the side. Pull that guy over. You get 300 pesos. Great. Pay for, pay right, for your exactly. dinner. Right, exactly. Get a case of beer. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now something else I absolutely love. I raced into work and started bragging to everybody about your wife. Uh, when she had an issue with a guy while she was out exercising and the guy came up oh, with a knife. Uh, yeah. Okay. And her response on social media was, I learned a lesson. Next time I go out exercising, I am going to have a weapon with me. And I loved <laughs> that personal responsibility, solve your own problem attitude. She's, I'm going to get some self-defense training. I got to get more prepared. So that kind of incident that, didn't seem to phase her much, at least the following day. Uh, how frequent is that? Like we're joking around about, oh yeah, some guy holds a, a knife to my wife's throat. Ha ha ha. Well, no, that's kind of uh, serious stuff. She took it well, but how frequent is that? Is this a, is okay, this a so big problem? First of all, just the level set. Um, she was walking alone with headphones in a wooded area uh, as part of her, she, she takes walks every day and uh, to get attached to nature and to get some exercise. Um, so she was she was kind of isolated in, in a certain area, and she saw this kid, and he was probably fourteen, fifteen, like not not an adult. And she sort of nodded at him, and then um, took out her six hundred dollar iPhone to take a picture <laughs> of, of the lake that she was walking next to, and then put it back in her pocket. And then he came up behind her and put the knife around her neck. And she didn't even realize that there was a knife around her neck. <laughs> she just felt, she okay. just felt him uh, because he, he put the knife around her neck, but also uh, his hand on her stomach and sort of like pressed up against her back. And she okay. immediately just whipped around and shoved him to the ground. Okay, okay, okay. I, I know this is bad timing. This is getting exciting, but we're going to cut to a break. And uh, right after the break, we'll be back to hear more about uh, Lisa getting attacked by the lake in Mexico. <laughs> And 
she didn't even realize that there was a knife around her neck. <laughs> she just felt, she okay. just felt him uh, because he, he put the knife around her neck, but also uh, his hand on her stomach and sort of like pressed up against her back. And she okay. immediately just whipped around and shoved him to the ground and said, what the fuck do you think you're doing? And, and this kid <laughs> who was probably homeless, we're not sure, um, just jumped up and like ran away. And she actually started, she actually started okay. to chase him for a minute. <laughs> Good for her. Good for her. And then she realized, wait a minute, what am I going to do if I actually catch this guy? He's got a knife, and I'm, I'm walking around with a fucking iPhone. Um, so uh, she turned around, and then she she called me, and I hopped in the car and drove like a bat out of hell to to go pick her up. Um, and she, uh, we ran into uh, somebody else that lives in the neighborhood that, that there's a there's a police patrol in the area and they came down and, and checked everything out. Um, after she yeah, after she'd already solved the problem. I know, yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, but she was, she was pretty rattled as you, know, you would be. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I went and got her a machete. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to take a yeah. So like, you know, if somebody wants to pull a knife on you. You're like, no, this is a knife. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, it, it's not easy to get firearms here. I mean, if you meet the right people, you can get firearms here in Mexico. Um, but it's it's a bit of a challenge. Um, right. It's not a no brainer. You can bring them in if you like drive across the border or whatever. Just don't admit that you have them, and then you'll just cruise right through. Um, uh, but uh, I went and got her a machete, and she started carrying it strapped to her leg. Uh, <laughs> Like in a, oh, cool. in a really cool. obvious way. So right. Like, <laughs> As machetes yeah. tend to yeah. uh, be carried. Yeah. So, uh, it was, it, so it's not a huge concern of yours now of, for, for either of you just going out and about. Like if you you forget a, uh, I don't know, I'm not a vegetarian. You forget some green beans or whatever you guys go out at night for. And you forget those and you want to go out at 930 at night for a quick green bean fix. Do you feel comfortable walking through the dark streets to the grocery store? Oh, I, I feel totally comfortable. Like, I, and, okay. But I'm in in many ways a different species than my wife because I'm male, <laughs> right? Right. And <laughs> from a different planet, anyway, right? Exactly. Mars, exactly. Or exactly. <laughs> um, so no, I've I, I've actually man, let me think about this just for a second. I don't think I've ever felt a personal threat while I've lived in Mexico, except for the guy that said the other day in the supermarket he was going to beat me up because I wasn't wearing a mask. <laughs> like a, a white character in the area of yeah, California. Probably. That's probably the closest thing is just some some gringo like busybody baby boomer um, claiming he was going to hurt me because I wasn't wearing a mask. Okay, well, it's is is there anything that I haven't asked you before we uh, hang up here? Is there anything else that that you can think of that a person that uh, is kind of thinking, hey? Should I escape the United States and go elsewhere? Uh, what else might a person want to uh, consider beyond the things we've well, chatted the, the about? The first thing I'd say is, is it's not essential that you speak the lo local language. It's a good idea that you do, but it's not essential. Uh, you can very much okay. get by with just sort of a survival version of the, the language. Um, so, so that's really helpful. Uh, one interesting thing about Mexico too is uh, when you rent. So when, when I talked earlier about uh, when we sold all our stuff and how liberating that was, one of the things I one of the things I right. realized is that like home ownership is sort of the American dream. But I know so many people whose houses own them. Like they, they I, I, right. I've, I've had colleagues where I've said, you know, you, it really help you if you moved from Michigan to Georgia for your, for your new job. Right. And the response was, well, I'm underwater on my house. Right. And, and right. I'm like, oh, okay, well, can't fix that. Um, and the, the, the realization around that was, I always thought I would like eventually want to like buy property and build a house and da, 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 da. Uh, but since we've moved, I've sort of decided I don't want that probably ever. I mean, maybe, maybe there'll be okay. some, there'll be some point where I, I want that, but 
the level of freedom that is provided by just renting uh, is amazing. And because of that, uh, one of our experiences has been when you rent a house here in, in Mexico, almost always it comes furnished. So you don't have to okay. have your own bed, your own sofa, your, your dining table or whatever. That, that just comes with the house you rent. And so, so the place okay. where we live now, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five bedrooms and one, two, three, four, five, six, six bathrooms, um, two living rooms, two kitchens. Uh, yeah, it's great. Wow. Uh, and um, it was all furnished. It was all furnished. And it was on okay. par with what we might have paid if for rent in a suburb of Atlanta. So for the same size or for, for less, actually for, for, for less room, okay. uh, we would have only had, we might've had okay. four bedrooms uh, in, in Atlanta. It was certainly only okay. one kitchen, <laughs> two kitchen, two kitchens right, is unheard right. of in the United States, but it's, it's fairly common uh, in Mexico, which is super convenient because my mom uses one of the kitchens and she's not vegetarian. Uh, and it was a okay. very big relief to my wife that she had that my mother could cook in a separate kitchen where she could where she could cook okay. meat. <laughs> uh, right, right. Well, interesting, and I hope that we can chat again. I think that I'm going to probably come up with some more uh, questions as time goes on, and probably hone in on a few of the things that I have the most questions about. And uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of the a lot of people listening right now are saying. You know, this this is no longer what uh, what we thought it once was, even if it never was that. I mean, I don't know if you're a lot younger than I am, but I remember growing up back in the '80s, you would actually hear somebody say to another person in response to something, say, "Hey, at least it's a free country," or "Go ahead, it's a free country," and you don't even hear that little term used anymore. Like it's it, it, it's just not it's not part of the vernacular anymore. No, you're right. It's um, not. It's and not. so. The, a lot of people are thinking about taking off. I, listen, I, if, if the, I, I guess the overall thing I could say is that if you feel like you're not free where you are and you know you're not, if you're listening to this, you know you're right. not, um, get the hell out while you still can. I, 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 I'm actually saying this to you, Shepard. Get the hell out while you still can. <laughs> I don't know why you're not here already, but... Um, Every person who is listening to this, who, who would tune in, should be aware of the fact that the, the rest of the world is not the same. Uh, it's not when, when you when you get out, you can get out and it's not complicated to do. Uh, it's very easy to get legal residency for Mexico, uh, especially if you have money. Um, but even if you don't, it's still not hard. Uh, and okay. uh, and if you don't care about legal residency, it's very easy to just cross the border and just go wherever the hell you want. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but uh, let's just say my legal status with regard to Mexico might be eh, <laughs> dubious. <laughs> yeah. uh, go ahead. It, it, yeah, that, that's actually uh, that's a concern because. Uh, my wife and I have spent our whole lives working, well, at least the last 20 years, uh, you know, working anywhere from 80 to 100 hours a week each in order to try to put some money into the, to the, the savings and, and get the investments and that kind of thing. And I, and I look at a lot of the, the people that I know, or some of the people I know that have taken the leap to become uh, international vagabonds and to go to Thailand for 11 months and just backpack that's a, around. That's a, that's a great term, the by the way, international vagabonds. I just want to point that out. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, there's kind of a little bit of jealousy there. But at the same time, when I talk to these people, oh, yeah, you go, can go a month without a hot shower and there are bugs crawling and you have to learn how to use one of those pits on the floor as your toilet. And quite frankly, I, I'm not not wealthy, but I do get to take a nice hot shower every morning and I, and I get to eat foods that I want and I have a nice car and then I have a nice, uh, that is a huge concern of mine is uprooting 
the stuff that, I, I, as you made the point earlier, I guess that stuff probably owns me more than I own it. Uh, but uprooting and leaving all of the, the little bit of the stuff that I've been able to gather, uh, that's a challenge for both my wife and me. It's, it's a weird thing. You don't, until you're in it, you don't understand it. It's, I mean, there's a lot of things where that's, that's the case, right? Until you're in it, you don't, you don't get it. Right. Um, remember that you could bring your car with you, first off, <laughs> like super easy. Right. <laughs> uh, I've even, I've been pulled over by a federale worried about my uh, tag, the tag on my car uh, being expired. <laughs> <laughs> he really cared about the well, Georgia no, he, County he, that wasn't yeah, getting you out of the He wanted, he, <laughs> want, he wanted to check why I was driving with my, with this expired tag. And did I really have the registration? And I showed him the registration. He goes, well, this is expired. And I, and I said, what do you care? <laughs> what, what, what difference does that make? Whether I paid, what do you owe Georgia? I paid those guys taxes or not? What do you care? And he looked at me and he goes, "Yeah, you're right." And he got back in his car and he drove off. <laughs> like, that was it. <laughs> he totally was just, just said, "Yeah, good point." <laughs> and that was the end of the conversation. I love that. <laughs> I do love some of the the casual nature, the the lighthearted nature that uh, the story, I don't know if you told me or someone else about Acapulco where the person was getting pulled over by a cop for a, a traffic infraction and, and they just kept going and they, they pulled into the Home Depot where it had the arm that you had to yeah. pay, you know, 10 yeah. cents or whatever. <laughs> work, and they went in because they know the cops wouldn't want to pay the 10 cents. So the cops just turned around and drove away. I love Dude, that. I, that. Okay. First off, that was David Robinson. Okay. That, that, that did that original story. And then after that happened to him my wife and I were in the same situation there was some motorcycle cop trying to pull us over and we just drove into a paid parking lot <laughs> and, and he just split <laughs> just <laughs> like, kept going yeah. not worth it yeah. you are listening to the Let's Think Show please visit us at letsthinkshow.com Let's think show.com. And welcome back to the Let's Think Show, where we are speaking with my good friend Nathan, who's living in Mexico. Uh, today, we're kind of looking at the question of you know, things aren't great here, uh, oh, but where can we go? Uh, do we go to a third world country? Do we go to some place in the United States? What do we What do we do to try to escape some of the tyranny that's going on and uh, yeah, try to find a little bit of freedom in our lives? And uh, we're back with Nathan. Uh, talking about a traffic stop in Mexico. There was some motorcycle cop trying to pull us over, and we just drove into a paid parking lot, <laughs> and, and he just split. <laughs> so just like, kept going. Yeah. Not worth it. We were like, we were like, we got to go to the grocery store anyway. Let's just pull in here, and when we take the the, the tabs that we have to pay, you know, twenty pesos for parking or whatever. He won't follow us. And he didn't. Right. He didn't. We just pulled in and that was the end of it. So great. It's, it's so hilarious. Um, yeah. I, the, I'll, I'll tell you one other story about getting pulled over. Um, one time, uh, Lisa was uh, in the car with our youngest daughter. And uh, they, tr they were pulling her over. And she didn't have like a lot of options because she was actually entering a tunnel. In, okay. in Acapulco. She was entering the tunnel in Acapulco and they, and they chased her and they, and they pulled her over. So she pulled over, but at the same time, the baby was also crying. So she started, she started breastfeeding our, our daughter and <laughs> then they came up to the car and she rolled down the window. So she rolled down the window and she's sitting there in the car breastfeeding our daughter. And it, it, the, they were like, three or four cops like swarming around the car with the, you know, they were all like at the ready, you know, they were they had hands on their guns. They didn't draw them, but they, you know, they were ready to pull them. And, and she rolled down the window and she's sitting there breastfeeding her. And the guy that saw her, the, the first approach the car just turned around to all the rest of them. It's like, Nope, no, never mind. No, just <laughs> go back. Just like wave, wave them off. Like, Get it. We're not doing this. <laughs> just not worth it <laughs> no. 
Well, I, I, I mean, it's, um, I, I don't mean this as a, as a criticism, but Mexicans as a culture are very superstitious. They, they have a, a very strong sense of karma. Okay. Uh, so while they may in some situations be extremely corrupt, uh, at the same time, in a lot of situations, they're like, well, I don't want to mess with that person because that's going to come back to haunt me. Right. A suckling baby is. <laughs> yeah. You don't like, want to mess I, with that process. Do I, do I want to rob a mother who's, who has her baby suckling? Right. You know, you know, like a, <laughs> that, that's not, that's bad juju. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, we're, we're leaving this situation. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It was really, it was really funny. If you're, if your listeners have questions that they share with you at all, I'm, Totally cool with um, responding to those as well. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nathan, for taking the time to chat today. I look forward to doing it again soon. And uh, yeah, thanks for being on the Let's Think show here on KHNC 1360. On the line, we have my friend Joel. And Joel, uh, we're going to see if he has the same perspective as Nathan, who we've been speaking with, or if he, eh, you know what, our kind of people, we always have our own unique perspectives. So first of all, welcome to the show, Joel. Thank you, Shepard. It's good to see you. Yeah, thanks for being on. And so uh, what are your thoughts? We've been talking about, uh, you know, things aren't perfect here in the United States, and they're not looking like they're getting any better. And where can we go to just be left alone if we want to build a back porch on our house and don't want to permit, or we just kind of want to have a little bit of freedom? Uh, I've been talking to Nathan about going to Mexico. What do you think? Are you planning to stay in the U.S. or move? Or what, what are your general thoughts on it? Well, you know, I've looked overseas. Um, one of the biggest barriers for me is that I'm, uh, I'm not fluent in another language. Um, but I think, uh, you know, another option to going overseas is to look at a good, um, a rural place in America. Um, and that's kind of where I've ended up in, uh, you know, in Lander, Wyoming. Okay. And you're, are you fairly okay being left alone there? Uh, you're, you're kind of sort of okay? No, um, you know, uh, it's not great here. I got to admit, um, Lander isn't as bad as, uh, uh, as some places as far as, um, you know, as far as harassment, but, um, you know, it's little things like, uh, you know, I'm on a ranch and every year I've got to send the, uh, the property tax people proof that I'm doing agricultural uh, operations, which is, you know, financial records. Wyoming's right. good. doesn't have a lot of, uh, you know, doesn't have a federal income or sorry, a state income tax here. Um, but, uh, you know, the biggest obstacle for me, uh, I've been overseas, but, uh, the language barrier it's um it's part of it, but I really think that the language barrier is a um almost a proxy for the um, the neighbors barrier. And right here, mm. where I am, my neighbors are very good. Um, we get along, um, and I guess uh, I guess that you know the point for me is if my neighbors got in trouble, would I break the law to help them? Ooh, that is a very good question to ask oneself. Yes, and we're not really talking about. Um, we're not talking about proper law because I think there is, you know, there's proper law, but as far as, you know, an, an unreasonable law, um, and really a lot of my neighbors, I would. And the question that, that comes up is, well, if I did that, would they turn me in? And you certainly <laughs> would want <laughs> right. to help a neighbor that, uh, that felt that way about you. Um, and I don't anticipate needing to break the law. Um, I don't think things are that rough. I, I am concerned. Uh, I'm concerned about, uh, uh, sort of the economy, sort of, sort, sort of, I, I think that, you know, these lockdowns are going to sort of create a wave and I'm wondering what's going to come as a result of that. Yeah, that's, that's certainly a scary thing. And you mentioned to me an article, uh, that things are, is it Argentina that things are kind of not going so well? And the, the, the point of the article was perhaps people should not be in a third world country. Yeah. Um, it was an Alan Stevo article and he's an interesting, uh, here he's an interesting commentator. Um, and I'd also been following, uh, Bill Bonner, who's a, he, he has a free, uh, update and he's been stuck. He was stuck in Argentina for eight months um, oh, wow. on, on a very remote ranch, um, which, you know, was his ranch. And he, he said it was a very good time for him, but I definitely heard, um, you know, the, the, the lockdowns were severe. I mean, if you got in your car and you went somewhere, the police would stop you and they would send you back. Um, and they've, they've had, you know, very, uh, very arbitrary rules around that. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I guess this is just a question that will continue for all of humankind. Where should we live? Where should we take our families? Where should we grow and be wonderful human beings? Um, yep. Speaking of wonderful human beings, thank you for being on the show with me today, Joel. And will you come on and chat with me again sometime? Yeah, I'd love to. And then just a quick thing, you know, uh, as Ben Franklin said, 
where liberty dwells, there is my country. And I have to say one more thing about, you know, sort of in the positives of being in other countries, when you go there and there are insane government policies, it somehow is just not as irritating because it's not your government. And I almost wonder. <laughs> I almost a different wonder master, and, and maybe they're not as good at being cruel. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they're, because they're just crazy. But, uh, but you know, if you could adopt that attitude for the U.S., I think uh, um, maybe you'd be happier. So it's, it's good to, to do what you can to be happy and, uh, and, and prosperous. So That is a great thought. Well, thank you so much, Joel. All right. Great talking with you, Shepard. It's an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? And, you know, something... Uh, I surround myself with people who are deep thinkers, people who read a lot of books and listen to lectures online and podcasts, whatever way a person gets their information. But people who don't have closed minds and people who are interested in learning new things and expanding their horizons and and really having a good, strong, principled foundation to their lives – that's who I surround myself with and it tends to be a voluntarist, uh, libertarian, anarcho-capitalist type crowd. And then I also have friends that are, are liberty-leaning uh, lefties and liberty-leaning righties. And, and of course, those two segments are very different from voluntarists. Uh, we have some, some same basic foundations, but I'll take one person, for example, uh, in reading Lavoie Fittikam's book, uh, his awesome book. I'll put a link in the description. I think only through blood and suffering, something to that effect. Uh, I kind of got the impression, here's this guy that is Mormon. He is uh, conservative. And we would have a lot of things that we could sit down over a, well, I was going to say over a beer, over a flavored lemonade and argue about. And we would, I, I think we'd just have these wonderful conversations and we'd probably find some areas that we'd say, eh, okay, let's, eh, let, let's just skip that one and talk about something we like. But I kind of came to the conclusion, I would love to have Lavoie Finnicum before he was assassinated. I would love to have him as a neighbor. Like we would really get along. Things could, things could be really good with him as a neighbor. And I have a feeling that those of you listening to this right now, I bet we would be good neighbors, too. And we would have our areas of disagreement. But I think we could overall get along pretty well. And so I struggle with this. We've we've heard from Nathan in Mexico, and we've hold, heard from Joel uh, from his ranch in Wyoming. And what do we do? Do, do we it's not working as is each of us kind of living in our own little areas and, and having to put up with the tyranny. But do, do we do the free state Wyoming or the free state, uh, oh, not Vermont, um, somewhere, maybe it was Vermont, somewhere on the East coast, a free state movement there. Um, or do we just find two friends and, and go in on a ranch somewhere in Montana or a big farm in Mississippi, or I don't know. I, I don't know where we can go to kind of get away from the people who want to put their nose in our business, quite frankly, uh, the people who want to make us wear masks and steal our money and tell us if we can have a cigarette or a soda or a gay lover or an AR-15 or a new porch without a permit. All these, these kind of things that we would think would be basic, I'm not going to say basic human rights, but you know, just kind of part of being a human being and pursuing your happiness and minding your own business and not hurting others. I, I don't know. I don't know where we can all go. Uh, so I guess, I guess we've spent this hour <laughs> deciding that we don't have a good solution. Uh, let's keep talking about this though. Let's keep thinking about solutions. And uh, I don't know, who knows, maybe at some point, some point we might figure something out. Thank you for listening to the Let's Think show. We're going to remain live on Saturday evenings. Uh, you can just listen to us live uh, 6 p.m. here on KHNC 1360 through the end of January. And then we're going to go to a podcast-based platform. So in the meantime, keep joining us here on KHNC 1360.